When you throw something away, do you ever think, where does the trash go? You fill up the can, it's emptied, you fill it up again, and it's emptied again. It has to go somewhere, right? Now, you might think that the garbage trucks come, take the trash, and dump it in a big pile somewhere called a dump. But you can't just dump trash wherever you want because that causes a lot of problems. When the trash breaks down or decomposes, it becomes either a liquid or a gas. When it becomes a gas, it gives off horrible smells that attract animals that can be dangerous or annoying to people. Not to mention, if they eat that trash, it can make those animals sick. These gases are also flammable, meaning they could catch on fire. Dumps also lack adequate systems to protect water sources, so they could pollute groundwater. Even worse, when a dump gets full, a new one would be built somewhere else, creating the same problems over and over again. That's why landfills were created. Landfills are well-engineered facilities designed to protect human health and the environment. The United States Congress passed a law in 1965 to improve waste disposal technology. What government agency oversees landfill operations? A, the FBI, B, the CIA, C, the EPA, or D, KFC? The answer is C, the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency. This is the Rumpke Sanitary Landfill. First stop is the scale house. As each truck comes into the landfill, it has to be weighed. There's a limit on the amount of trash that can be accepted at the site on a daily basis. On average, around 9,000 tons of trash comes in each day. That's like 80 blue whales worth of trash. Let's take a look at the trucks that make the landfill work. The rear loader makes more than 500 stops a day mostly to homes. It's the type of truck you might see in your neighborhood. The front loader picks up mostly dumpsters, which is why they have the arms in the front. They make fewer stops, go to schools, businesses, and restaurants to pick up all of their trash. Transfer trailers are coming from transfer station facilities built in between where the trash is collected and where the landfill is located. Rather than having several smaller trucks drive 40 miles to the landfill, the smaller trucks stop at a transfer station and the load is transferred onto a tractor trailer. Then, only that one large truck makes the longer trip. Roll-off trucks carry open top containers that are usually used on construction sites. They also carry compactors that are often used at hospitals, grocery stores, and other manufacturing facilities. How much trash on average does a person throw away each day? A, one pound. B, 4.5 pounds, C, 20 pounds, or D, 50 pounds? The answer is B, 4.5 pounds each day for each person. So remember, when garbage breaks down, it releases harmful gases like methane and carbon dioxide. The garbage also breaks down into a liquid called leachate, or garbage juice that can seep into the ground and pollute water. To prevent this, a landfill is separated into many different sections, and each section is called a cell. Like an onion, each cell has many layers to protect that decomposing trash from harming the environment and us. First, a cell starts with a large hole. The first layer is made totally out of clay. When the clay hardens, it becomes strong and hard, like a piece of pottery. But even clay can crack. So that's why we have the second layer, which is made out of super strong, thick plastic. This high density polyethylene, or HDPE, is rolled out like a carpet along the cell walls and heat sealed together so nothing can leak out. The third layer is called the geocomposite layer. It's a material that's almost like felt. This layer helps to cushion and absorb the weight of all of the trash and also protects the plastic layer from being damaged. A series of pipes covered by a drainage layer of sand and gravel run along the bottom of the cell. Those pipes collect all of the garbage juice or leachate, which is pumped out of the cell and stored until it can be cleaned. The last section of a cell is called the fluff layer. 
this adds a fourth and final layer that helps protect and test the cell so we know it's ready to become the working face. The working face is the area that is currently open to accept all of our trash. As parts of the landfill fill up, it's then covered in soil and a new working face is opened. Thirsty? But all you have around is piles of garbage? No worries. Turn that garbage into garbage juice. This toxic sludge will make you feel alive right up until it doesn't. Because of landfill technology, supplies are low, so act fast. Garbage juice, it's real gross. In order to fit as much trash as possible into each cell, the landfill uses some specialized machinery to squish it all down. Bulldozers and excavators are heavy duty equipment used for earth movement and excavating. Here at the working face, they are taking the incoming waste and spreading it out evenly for the next piece of equipment. Steel wheel compactors weigh about 120,000 pounds. In fact, a single wheel can weigh as much as 7,000 pounds. Not to mention, these giant machines cost over a million dollars each. That said, these giants have a very important job. They are used to smash the incoming waste down to one quarter or less of its original size. The tipper machine assists with the unloading of the tractor trailer loads coming in from transfer stations. Just like it sounds, it tips upwards, releasing a hatch and all of the waste within. Rock trucks are mega sized machines that help stabilize the area by bringing in gravel and rocks. Safety is a top priority at Rumpke, so they have to keep rebuilding the roads with rocks. Also, roads and paths are always changing with the movement of the working face. Now, the working face moves slightly every day as there are lots of machinery and trucks that pass through 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year round. That's right, the landfill never closes and it's always being worked on. But the really amazing thing is what they do to make sure that the landfill is invisible to the public. There's a full-time naturalist on the Rumpke staff that helps control any pesky animals and protects them. Many times these animals don't realize that the landfill is not a safe food source. So the naturalist does lots of things like playing different sounds and spraying pheromones to keep the animals away and safe. To stop litter from spreading back out into our neighborhoods, all vehicles that enter the landfill must go through a wheel wash before leaving the site. Rumpke's wheel wash uses reclaimed rainwater to wash off any sediment and debris that might have gotten stuck on the truck. After the wheel wash, drivers proceed to the truck wash where they get a thorough body wash to ensure that nothing else gets stuck to the sides and will be taken off site and onto the city streets. And speaking of smell, all that trash does smell of course, which is why there's a large system of hoses that run throughout the landfill dispensing a continuous mist made of fruit and vegetable extracts and water. This mist is designed to neutralize odors associated with waste, composting, and the landfill gas. Something really interesting is that many of the machines that work the landfill are actually powered by gas harvested from the site itself. The methane gas is collected through nearly 300 collection wells, where it is purified and converted into natural gas energy. Not only does it power the landfill, but it also powers nearly 30,000 homes and businesses in the area. All kinds of things find their way into the trash and ultimately the landfill. The Rumpke Sanitary Landfill contains both treasures and curiosities alike. The remains of a deceased elephant from a turn of the century traveling circus. Jewels from an ill-fated department store heist which were concealed in a garbage bag and mistakenly set in the trash. And the leftovers of a giant record-breaking chocolate bar that was traveling the country and melted when the refrigerated truck failed. What a waste. Landfills are a necessary part of our society. We have to have a place to throw away our garbage. But there are a lot of things we can do to help slow this process down. The four R's can help us take care of this beautiful planet. Reduce, reuse, recycle, and rot. Reduce means we can buy less and use less things. That's like using a reusable water bottle or your own bags at the grocery store. A great way to reuse is by donating old items instead of throwing them away. 
things like clothes, books, and toys can all be donated. You've probably heard of recycling. This is another direct way to keep our stuff out of the landfills. Nearly half of the landfill is filled with bottles, cans, glass jars, and paper. All of these things could have been recycled into new things instead of taking up space in the landfill and using new resources. The last R stands for rot, which means composting instead of throwing your fruit and veggie scraps in the trash. Because there is no oxygen or healthy microbes in the landfill, organic materials take 20 years or longer to decompose. At home, those plants, fruits, and veggies will take just a few weeks to break back down into new healthy soil that can be used to grow more delicious and nutritious food. Remember, we need landfills. They are impressive feats of engineering that give jobs to thousands of people and take all the things we don't need anymore out of sight, storing them in a safe way. When a landfill is finally full and can't take any more trash, it is covered with about five to six feet of soil. And that new land can be used again for fields, prairies, and parks. One day, far into the future, your grandchildren might come to know Mount Rumpke for its rolling hills, never knowing what lies beneath. Future archeologists may excavate the landfill to discover how we live and how much waste we created. With the loss of renewable resources, companies may start to mine landfills for materials we once so thoughtlessly threw away. Just because our trash is out of sight doesn't mean it should be out of mind. By thinking hard about what we do and don't throw away, we can keep more out of the landfill, saving land for people, and better yet, nature. This video was made possible through the generosity of our donors. Special shout outs to Charles H. Dater Foundation, the City of Cincinnati, the Ohio's Arts Council, the General Electric Community Service Fund, the Kroger Foundation, Elsa High School Foundation, Duke Energy. To learn more about Keep Cincinnati Beautiful and all of our programming, visit our website at www.keepcincinnatibeautiful.org. Learn how you can get involved, volunteer, and make this city beautiful by signing up for our newsletter and following us on social media. As a nonprofit, we thrive through the support of our sponsors and individual donors like you.